Hey there, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'll be going over how you can connect your React frontend created using Vite with your Node.js or Express backend. Without further ado, let's begin. So first off, I have VS Code opened up inside a directory called Vite Express Video, and here I will have my terminal opened and we're going to be creating our React frontend first, and then I'll walk you through setting up the backend. So first we can do npm create at vite or create vite at latest and then it's going to ask us a series of questions regarding our app and we need to first install the create vite package so i'll just hit enter and then it's going to ask us for our project name for this i will just type out client and then it's going to ask us to select a framework and as you can tell by the title of this video we'll select react and then the variant i'll just select javascript and now that it has scaffolded the project, we can enter into the client directory by doing cd client and then npm install to install all the necessary dependencies. And if you give it a few seconds, it'll install all of these dependencies. And after everything has installed, we can now work toward setting up the backend and then we can run our servers. So after our front end has been created, I'm now going to show you how to create the server. So first I'm going to create a server directory by going here in the Explorer tab and clicking this create folder icon to create a server folder. And then I'm going to clear my terminal and enter into this server directory by doing cd dot dot to get out of this client directory and then forward slash server to enter into the server directory. And here I'm going to run npm init hyphen y to answer all of the questions for creating a server package.json file. And if I expand the server, you can see that this package.json has been created. And we're going to enter inside of our package.json file and then configure a few settings. So here I'm going to change the entry point to our server from the default index.js to server.js. This is purely up to personal preference. If you'd like to keep it, as index.js or rename it to something else you can but I just prefer that my entry point is named server.js and then in my terminal I'm going to create a file called server.js as the entry point if you named your file something else you can do that also so I'll do touch server.js to create my server.js file and you can see that that is showing up right here and now we can begin installing the necessary dependencies for our backend. So I'm gonna first clear my terminal to make it easier for you guys to see. And we're gonna to need to install Express since that is our backend framework and that can be done with NPI or NPM I Express. And if you give it a second, it'll install the dependency. And then we're gonna to need to install Nodemon so that if we make any changes to our server code while we are running the server, the changes will be reflected automatically rather than having to restart our server manually. So this can be done with npm i nodemon and then hyphen capital D to ensure that this is installed as a dev dependency. So I'll hit enter and if you give it a second again, it'll finish installing. And now that our necessary dependencies have been installed, we need to update our scripts in our package.json and add a few scripts. So I'll first add a start script and this is gonna be set to nerd node server and then I'll add a dev script, which will be set to nodemon server. And this start script can be called with npm start, and this is going to start our server. And this dev script can be called with npm run dev, which will start the development server. And I do want to make clear that whatever comes after node or nodemon, in my case, it's server, it must be the name of your server file. So it must be the entry point to, the, to your server. So since my entry point is server.js, I have node server and node mod server. And now that we have configured our package.json file and have installed the necessary dependencies to get started, we can begin creating our backend API. So to set up our backend API, I'll open my server.js file and we're going to need to import express first. So we'll do this by doing const express is equal to require express and then we need to create an app instance by doing const app is equal to express 
And now that we've initialized our app, we have to create the route for our backend API. So I'll first do app.get forward slash API, which is going to be our route. And this has created an entry point for a route at forward slash API. And we can just send some data from this backend API to our front end to fetch. So to configure what data we're going to send, uh, we'll just do res.json. And then let's just send an array of fruits. So res.json fruits, and then this is going to be set to an array. And we'll just include apple. Um, whoops, I need to put a curly bracket here orange and banana. And this res.json will basically send a response that contains this array of fruits. And the array can be accessed with this fruits key. And the fruit array will just contain apple, orange, and banana. And this will be sent every single time that a request is sent to this API route. And now that we've configured this route, we need to run our app. And this can be done with app.listen. 80, 80, and then have an arrow function and just do console.log server started on port 8080. So this app.listen will access our app instance and ensure that the app is running on port 8080 and listen for any requests that may be sent to our backend. And after the server has started, it'll print out this console.log stating that the server has started on port 8080. And with ports, you can configure whatever port you'd like, but make sure that it doesn't interfere with other servers that may be running, which is why I chose 8080 since this isn't as prevalent when it comes to usage. So to now run our app, um, you're just gonna wanna type in npm run dev inside of your server directory. And the reason that we're doing npm run dev is because in our package.json, we configured a dev script that would run nodemon server so that if we made any changes, to this backend as we were developing it, the server would restart automatically to showcase the changes. And if you were to run this in a production setting, then you would use npm start since that's not something that you have to restart. So upon hitting enter, you can see that it says server started on port 8080. And if we go to our browser and navigate to localhost port 8080 forward slash API, which is our API route, you can see that the data is displayed right here. We have this um, array containing apple, orange, and banana, and this is assigned to this fruits key. So now that we've completed our server configuration and can see the responses sent from our API route, we can start connecting our front end and fetch the data from our back end. Now, I did mention that we were going to fetch from our back end, but prior to doing that, we need to configure cores and we need to configure cores so that our back end server accepts requests from our front end server. Otherwise, the requests from our front end server will not go through. So, to do this, I'm going to open up another terminal inside of my server directory and I'm going to install cores by doing npm i cores and then I'll import and configure cores to accept requests from our front end by doing const cores is equal to require cores so that we have it imported and then we're going to configure the options for cores so we'll do const cores options is going to be set to origin and then we're only going to accept requests from our front end server which is going to be running on localhost 5173 which is the port that vite um, servers run on and then we're just going to need to initialize our app to use cores. So we'll do app.use cores, and then we're going to pass in the cores options so that the requests are only accepted from this origin. And now that we have this configured, you can see that we have automatic um, refreshes in our server as well due to using nodemon. And now we can begin with our front end. So to begin with our front end, I'm going to first navigate into my client directory by doing cd dot dot forward slash client and then I'll just clear my terminal. And in order to fetch from our client to get data from our server, we need to install Axios, which is a library that will allow us to send uh, requests. So I'm gonna do npm install Axios in our client directory. And now I'm going to expand the client directory right here, head on over to source and click on app.jsx, which is the boilerplate starter code that Vite provides you with. And I'll just start up my uh, front end server by doing npm run dev. And once I hit enter, I'll just head on to a new tab 
and go to localhost at port 5173. And here you can see the boilerplate React application that Vite provides you with. And now that we have this up and running, our next goal would be to test whether or not API fetching actually works. So to do this, we've already installed Axios. And what we're going to need to do is import use effect first. And then we'll create a function to now um, fetch the API. So we'll do const fetch API. And we're going to use use effect in a second. And if you don't know about it, I have a video on it, which I'll link in the top right corner. But first, we're going to create this fetch API function. And this will be an asynchronous function since we are fetching an API. And we'll do const response is equal to await axios, which I forgot to import. And then we'll do axios.get http colon slash slash localhost at port 8080 and forward slash API. And the reason that we're doing this is because we are going to basically wait for Axios to fetch this route right here, which should return this array containing fruits. And once Axios has gotten the response from the API, it'll store that response in this response variable. And to test whether or not this works, I'm going to first just log this to the console by doing console.log response.data.fruits, which will just access this array and log this array to the console. And now that we've created this fetch API function, we need to call it. And we're going to be calling this fetch API function on the initial render of this app component. And to do that, we'll use use effect. So use effect can be used to run side effects in your component. And what I've done here is I've called the arrow function inside of use effect and inside of this arrow function, we're just going to call the fetch API. And I've also passed in an empty array at the end of our use effect to ensure that this only runs on the initial render of this component. So if I go to my application here and open up the console and refresh it, you can see that we have apple, orange, and banana displayed in our console, meaning that our API fetching is working. And the reason that we have two console logs instead of one like we programmed is because React has this parameter called strict mode, uh, which is used for testing, which prints things to the console twice. So you can ignore that. But this basically means that our API fetching is working, and now we just need to display it to our web page. So to display it, on the web page, we're gonna head back to our code. And what I'm gonna do is create a use state array. Now, a use state is basically gonna be used so that we can create an array. And the array itself is gonna have an initial value of just an empty array first. And then after we've retrieved the fruits from our backend, we're just gonna populate this array with those fruits. So we'll just do set array to response.data.fruits. And this will basically get the fruits from the back end. And instead of having an empty array, we'll set the array's new state to include the fruits. So after doing this, we can head on over to our code over here and just display the items in the array by using array.map. So I'll do curly bracket and then do array.map and each array is gonna have a fruit and it's also gonna have an index or each item in the array. And then we'll just map it to a div tag. And inside of this div, we'll have a p tag that'll contain the fruit itself. And then I'll just do a break tab uh, there. And the key for this div tag is just going to be the index. So this code basically will access this array after the data has been fetched and it will grab every fruit and then display every element uh, within this div tag with the fruit in a p tag and a line break after it. And if we go over here, you can see that apple, orange, and banana have been printed. If I refresh it, you can see that this is doing exactly what we needed to be doing. And let's say if we were to change some data in the back end, so in the server, uh, instead of having orange, I have strawberry. If I 
save my changes in my server and refresh it here, you can see that this is fetched automatically. And if I want to change banana as well to, I don't know, pineapple, and save the changes in my server and refresh my front end, you can see that pineapple is displayed as well. All right, so that concludes this video. And just to recap what we did, we first created a Vite front frontend, and then we configured our backend server by installing the necessary dependencies and creating our API route. And then we also configured our package.json file as well as installing cores so that it could accept requests from our front end. And then we installed Axios on our front end to send requests to our back end. And we did that by creating a fetch API function, which would run on the initial render of the component and then set the array state variable that we made with use state uh, with the fruits that were fetched from the back end. And after we did the API fetching, we used the state variable to display the fruits on the web page by mapping every element of the array to a div tag containing the p tag which displayed the fruit. So I hope this was helpful in connecting your Vite front end with your Flask back end. And if it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment down below in the comment section. And with that being said, have a great day.